are, women world changers. And in your notes, I want you to look at, notice that we're going to look at three different women in the Bible. There are a lot more that we could look at, and this isn't going to be an exhausted study. We're just going to take a quick glimpse at their lives and just see what it is that we can take from their lives to, to, um, to, to model our life after. And the first woman we're going to look at is Esther. Now listen, Esther was a world changer because she was at the right place at the right time. Now listen to this. It's Esther 4.14, and this is uh, Mordecai is speaking to her because there's a threat here against the Jewish people. Haman had decided that he was going to get rid of the Jewish people, and so that he had um, gotten the king to sign off on this decree that on a certain day they could wipe him out. And um, And so Mordecai is coming to Queen Esther, and he says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Maybe, he's saying, just maybe all of this is so that you can be right here, right now. He's putting a call on her. Now listen to Esther. It probably didn't feel like the right time or the right place. When you read her story, you find out that Esther didn't have any parents. So she was being raised by Mordecai, which is, it says that in um, Esther 2, it says that that is her cousin. It was her uncle's daughter. And so Mordecai took her in and raised her as his own. But can you imagine what it may have been felt like to not have a mom or a dad. Some of you maybe have experienced that in life. So maybe this didn't feel like the right place for her. And then it, some people believe that Esther was a teenager when she became queen, probably around 14 years old. It says um, that they gathered all the young ladies and that Esther was beautiful in frame and face. And so let's just look at this. Maybe she just is feeling very awkward not fitting where she should. Yeah, I know Mordecai loved her, but man, something was missing that day. You see, Esther, maybe like some of us was missing the mom's love that day. And so she didn't feel like this is where she was supposed to be. Or, or maybe, can you imagine it's your uncle and, and teenage years are weird and you just need somebody to talk to. But instead, you're now the queen. Instead, you've been ripped out of a home that you know, and now, now here, I've put a crown on you, and, and now my uncle is telling me that maybe all of this has happened in my life for such a time as this. See, sometimes in our life, it feels like it's full of awkward moments. But maybe all of that that has happened in your life to move you from here and move you to there is for such a time as this in your life. So that God can use you and call you to be a world changer. See, our life isn't our own. When we come in in alignment and agreement with Jesus and say, I'll follow you, guess what? I now give him permission to move me so that his plan can be accomplished. And because of that, you know what? That day was supposed to be the biggest day of destruction for Jewish people. But because Queen Esther decided, you know what, I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my position, and I'm going to approach the king, and I'm going to beg for mercy for my people. Because she did that, the day that was supposed to bring the biggest destruction for her people became the day of greatest victory. See, so many times in our life, we think that all these awkward moments are lining up so that the enemy can take us out, and God is saying, no, I am doing that to bring victory in your life. For such a time as this, I've moved you here so that you can be an instrument of victory in other people's lives. Because Esther was willing to be at the right place at the right time, it wasn't just victory for her and her family. It was victory for the whole Jewish people. And see, it says... That because in those days, the Jews rid themselves of their enemies. And as the month which was turned for them from grief to joy and from mourning into a holiday, they made that an annual day of celebration. God has the ability, if we are being like Queen Esther, 
to be at the right place at the right time to turn your enemies away from you and turn your grief into joy. That's the power of being willing to be a world changer like Esther. Then we look at Ruth. Now, Ruth, she was willing to leave behind all she knew to pursue God. So Ruth's story is that she was married to Naomi's son, and Naomi's um, husband and, and uh, Ruth's, both, both of uh, Naomi's um, sons died, and so Naomi is left with Ruth and, and her other daughter-in-law, Orpah, and they need to go back home. Ruth says um, to Naomi as they're going, she says, listen, don't urge me to leave because, see, Naomi's going, go back home. I have nothing to offer you. I'm too old to have sons. I have nothing to offer you, so I release you to go back home. And Orpah did that, but, but listen to Ruth. She says, do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Think about that for a minute. How did Naomi live in such a way that it caused Ruth to fall in love with Naomi's God? What was it about her life that said, no, I'm going to follow you because I'm going to let your God be my God? She was willing to leave behind everything. Ruth was willing to leave behind family, friends, everything that was familiar to her. To follow God. She must have known that it was challenging. She must have known that what was coming was going to be hard because, see, Ruth was a Moabite woman. And Moabites are enemies of the Israelites. In Numbers 22, you remember the story where the Israelites are coming through and and, um, the head of the Moabite people uh, asked Balaam to, to put a curse on the people? Remember that story and the donkey finally stops? Balaam, it's because the Moabs wanted to curse them. And so they're enemies. But instead, God used that curse and turned it into a blessing. Let me just stop right there. That itself could preach. Somebody might be rising up against you and one of your enemies are like, God, just curse them. And God says, no, uh, I'm going to turn that into a blessing. And I'm going to speak blessing and life over them. Sometimes our our enemies want to come against us, but God is greater than our enemies. Amen? And God will cause blessing in your life. But Ruth was willing to do that. She knew that the challenge was hard. But listen, God was willing to look and go beyond Ruth's past, her label of a Moabite woman, because he saw her heart. Her heart was dedicated to him. His heart, her heart was willing to go and pursue and to seek after this God. I'm going to follow wholeheartedly, forgetting what's behind me. I'm going to go this way. Reminds me of that song, that though none go with me, still I will follow. The cross before me, the world behind me. That's the kind of faith Ruth had, that she was willing to do that. And because of that, her identity was no longer that of a Moabite. Instead, God took an outsider, and he brought her into the family of God. You see, what happened is in the story of Ruth is that Boaz married Ruth. He's the kingsman redeemer. He was the one that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry you, and I'm going to bring you into the family. God does that to us, doesn't he? God redeems us and brings us into his family. That's the power of God, that he can look past and beyond our past. If we're willing to just turn away, he'll pull us in, and he'll bring us into that. And guess what? Boaz married Ruth, and they had a child named Obed, and he had a son named Jesse, and Jesse had a son who became King David, an outsider, a foreigner, somebody that was supposed to be looked down upon. God brought her in and caused her to be part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. Do you realize that Ruth, because of her faith, because of her tenacity, is only one of the five women listed in the lineage of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1? That's what God can do with somebody whose heart is wholeheartedly pursuing God. That's a world changer. 
That is the power of being in alignment and in agreement with God. Yes, the pursuit of God will cost you something. But our God is the great rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And listen, in, in Ruth, Boaz says to her, May the Lord repay you for your kindness, and may your reward be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. When we hide and we draw under God, blessing comes, and God will reward us for that. Listen, the third one we're going to look at is Mary. Mary was set apart by her trust in God. Mary said, I'm the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. That is when Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and an angel appeared to her and said, Blessed are you, woman, who have found favor with God and, and told her that she was going to bring the Messiah. She was going to be the mother of Jesus. And she was like, I'm the Lord's servant. Let it be. What trust in God. Again, a teenage girl caught the attention of an almighty God. Do not underestimate our teenagers. Their lives can live in such a way that it catches the attention of our God. And if it catches the attention of God, should it not catch our attention? Should we not be able to see our young men and women and say, God's got his hand on you. God's going to use you, and I want to be a part of that. I want to speak life into you. But it was her trust. What I mean, I would love to have been able to see Mary's life. What was it about her that caused God to take notice? To say, yep, that's the one I will entrust my son with. That's the one that can carry out this plan. That's the one who can change the world. It's trusting in God. Complete surrender. Mary would have to learn how to trust him. Mary was willing, right, to just say, whatever you want, God, I will be a part of that because I trust you. And anything you have for me, God, is good because that's who you are. See, all of these world changers, they change the world by, number one, by, by facing uncertainty, and you and I, guess what? We get to be world changers. You and I have the power, whether we're male or female, to be world changers. But we're going to have to do what they did. We're going to have to be willing to face uncertainty. Esther didn't know the outcome. She knew the risk. If she went before the king without being summoned, her life was on the line. But because she understood the weight that was upon her, she told Mordecai, go get all the Jews together and fast and pray for me for three days. And I'll fast and my, my maidservants will fast and pray. Then I will go to the king. Though it is even against the law, if I perish, I perish. She was willing to, to step into her God-given destiny even though she didn't know the outcome. Facing uncertainty is something that we will have to do if we want to be a world changer. We're not going to have it all figured out. But we can have the ability to say, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm going to be who God called me to be because I'm here. And I'm going to do it. And God's in charge of the outcome. I'm in charge of being who God called me to be. But if I perish, I perish. But I want to have that kind of faith. I want to go, God, I'll do it. If I fail, I fail, but you're still God. I want to have that ability to just say no matter what, it, I don't have all the answers. And to some people, that is it's just not a smart move to step out if you don't know what the, what's going to happen. But, man, God always shows up. God is always faithful. If we will step out and face uncertainty, and then if we will step out in faith, do you see that God does all these things, but then we have to get into partnership? Now, see, God made a way. God had Esther where Esther needed to be. And he had Ruth with Naomi. And then she had to take that step of faith 
to leave behind everything. There's actions, right? Faith without works is dead. You and I are called to an active faith. An alive faith. That means I got to get out of the boat. That means I got to do some things that I, I don't know how this is going to look and I'm not really sure about it, but I have faith in an almighty God. A faith in an almighty God. When I begin to step out in the things that God has called me to do, God prepares and makes a way. How many times you read the story? Um, when Joshua was taking the people, not when most of it, when Joshua was taking the people to cross the river, and the river didn't split until their feet got in the water. The situation did not change. The water didn't part beforehand. Put your feet in the water. When you take that step of faith, God begins to move. God begins to make the way for you and me. So for us to be a world changer, we have to take that first step of faith. I would have loved to have seen their face, wouldn't you? Be like putting that foot in the water. Oh, and it parted. I wonder if they took it out and tried it again. <laughs> These are the things that I think. I wonder what that would have been like. Hmm. Um, see, I told you my nieces get their craziness from me. But I want to have a crazy faith. I want to have a kind of faith that I will step out when God tells me to. I haven't always been that way. I'm the quiet kid who didn't talk till she was 10. Because I was scared. But you know, we sang it today and Pastor Lawrence said it. And Pastor Joel said it. God is bigger than fear. And so many times it's our fear of the unknown that keeps us from stepping out in faith. But how many of you, like me, say, you know what? I, I want to change the world. I want to make a difference. That's me today. In order to make that difference, I'm willing to take a step of faith. And when I take that step of faith, fear is defeated. Fear has no hold on me. Because faith is greater than our fear. And God says he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I am so thankful for the sound mind because sometimes I have to tell myself, stop thinking. Right? Of all the what ifs. Well, if I do that, what if that happens? What if? Stop and just take the step of faith. If God has called us to do it, he will put his favor on us. Do you see that Esther found favor with the king when she stepped out in faith? Ruth found favor with Boaz when she stepped out in faith. And Mary found favor with God. There's something about walking in faith that causes favor on your life. You want the favor of God, you got to take the step of faith. That's the power of unity with what God is doing. And we, by walking in obedience to God, we can change the world. They were going to have to learn to how to obey. Esther could have told Mordecai, you're crazy. I'm not going to do this. But she was willing to listen to someone speak into her life and say, this is what God's called you to do. Ruth was willing to listen to Naomi because when, when Ruth went and she worked in the fields, she came home and Naomi said, whose field did you work in? And she said, Boaz. And she said, he's one of our kingsmen redeemers. Do what I say. And she did everything that, that, Ruth, uh, that Naomi asked her to do. And because of her obedience, it aligned her with what God was doing and it brought favor to her life. Sometimes we have to be teachable to other people who've been down the journey a little longer than us. That's why the body of Christ is important. That's why we come together in church is because I need you and you need me. I need you to encourage me to step out in faith. I need you to tell me that God's been there for you and he'll be there for me. 
I need you to give me some godly advice. If I want to get into the blessing and the favor of God, then I need you to tell me, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you follow God's leading here? It looks like God is calling you this way. Why don't you, why don't you walk in that? And then Mary was going to have to learn how to really rely on God because those days had to be the hardest days. Can you imagine as a 13-year-old going home and telling your parents, well, I'm having a baby, but I've been good. If you have a problem with it, there's this angel. He'll come tell you about it. Right? But what faith. But she was willing to, to walk in obedience. And then they had to do things. And there were times that, that um, Joseph was warned in a dream, like, hey, don't go back there because they're going to want to kill Jesus. They could have gone, really, Joseph? Do you really know what you're talking about? Mary could have been like, hmm, you didn't stop and ask for directions, and we had to wander on that donkey, and now you want me to trust you that we're supposed to go on another road trip? I'm paraphrasing the Bible. Don't you love it? Like, hmm. Um, but you know what? She had to learn to walk in obedience because obedience brings blessing. Obedience brings protection. And obedience brings joy. Obe I'm, I'm telling you, when you know that you are trusting God, when you know that you are walking in exactly who God called you to be, there is no other joy and peace like that. To be able to go to bed and be like, yep, all is well with my soul. All is good with me and Jesus. Not because I'm so great, but because he's great. I'm just walking with him. I'm just walking with him. Do you understand the value of walking in obedience? See, it's not about the rules. It's about walking in complete unity with God. And where he goes, I'll go. Right? Where, when God says, hey, hold up, I'm going to stop here for a minute. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stop with you. I'm going to be with you, God. I'm not going to run ahead. I'm not going to lag behind. The only way you and I get to change the world is when God writes us into his story. It's all his story. And that's what he did. He used all of these women to write his story. But because they would partner with him, they got to be part of his story. You heard it when Mordecai said to Esther, listen, God will rescue his people. You, may, you and your family may perish. God's going to accomplish his purpose. It's do you want to be a part of the story? I want to be a part of his story. I want to be a world changer for Jesus. I don't want people to um, wonder, hmm, wonder what she was all about. I'm about Jesus, I'm about God's power, about God's grace, about God's goodness, and that God has a plan and purpose for each one of us. No matter our past, no matter our labels, no matter the ridicule, Mary probably went to be from being one of the most made fun of teenagers. The Bible doesn't say that, but can we just take a minute? Anybody remember junior high? Raise your hand if you remember junior high being awkward. Anybody remember any kids teasing you? Okay, do you think it was any different for Mary? But man, today, she's one of the most respected women. That's the power of God. That he can take your life and people don't understand what God's doing and they're like, what is up with that person? That now, God can put you in a position that you are respected you are valued as a woman of faith, a hero. God can do that with any one of us if we will do these things, if we will just have complete confidence in who God is. Today is not going to be a long day, but I want us to do something. That's the end of my sermon, guys. Yes, right? Happy Mother's Day to you. It's short and sweet and to the point because here's the thing that I really want 
God to deal with our hearts. You and I are world changers. Because when we get in alignment and agreement with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in us and empowers us to live different than the world. We have the ability to change our family's future. We have the ability to not just save our own family, but all those around. And you don't know that the things that God has called you out of and rescued you from is to spare the next generation from ever knowing that bondage. You ever think about that? That when God called all the Israelites out of bondage, that there was a generation that just grew up and never knew that burden. God is calling you and me out of bondage so that the burden doesn't have to be passed to the next generation. God is calling you and me to be a world changer, to be set apart by faith and trust in God, to take our position and go, you know what, this has been hard, but I'm here and I'm going to do it for such a time as this. God has brought me here. And I am willing to pursue God with everything I have. I'm willing to leave behind my past. I'm willing to to look past how people have labeled me and say, you know what? Nope, my identity is in Christ now. That's who I am. I'm not my past. Somebody say that I am not my past. My identity is in Jesus. That's who you and I are. I hope you leave today going, yes, I am going to live as a world changer. so glad that you are here with us this morning. Here are some of our upcoming events. Forge is headed to Breakaway Youth Camp July 8th through the 12th. This is an incredible week that our students will never forget. This camp is for students who have completed 6th through 12th grades. Registration and the deposit is due next Sunday, May 19th. You can see Pastor Joel or I for any questions. On May 30th from 6 to 8 p.m., our Mexico missions team is hosting a bowling fundraiser. This is a great opportunity for you to enjoy a night with family and friends and support our missions team as they prepare to head to Mexico in October. The cost is $10 a person for your game and shoes or $15 a person for two games and your shoes. You must purchase your tickets before May 26th and you can get your tickets from Pastor Joel or I or any of our Mexico missions team.